We are using USDA chuck. Now usually, you know what they say, you gotta beat your meat to tenderize it. But guess what? You don't have to beat your meat today. Not today. The oven is going to tenderize. The oven is going to beat this meat. So you can rub it a little, that's okay. But we're gonna be rubbing the seasonings in anyway. So let's get started, shall we? Starting with quality. Now, yeah, these are huge, but they're beautiful. Now look at this. You see all this nice marbling in here? Okay, what's going to happen is I'm going to slow roast this at 250 degrees between four and five hours, depending on, you know, everything cooks differently in different houses and things, so depending on the oven that I'm using, I'll, take, I'll check it out as I take it out. So, what's going to happen when you're using quality compared to a really lean piece or one that doesn't have marbling whatsoever in it is that, oh, see all these beautiful little fat layers, all the marbling in there? This is all going to melt in the meat slowly. And that is going to tenderize and moisturize and give your meat all those wonderful flavors. This is the difference. On top of that, when you slow roast, all the juices are going to be released. When the juices are released, uh, it's going to fill your pan basically with your gravy. We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. So let's season, shall we? We want to heavily season because we, these are big, thick pieces. So, I'm going to be using fresh ground pepper. I'm going to be using fleur de sel. You can use just regular salt or sea salt. You don't have to use this. This is a pricey one, but um, if you can get your hands on it, it's a good one. Uh, I'm using Spiceology for, I use Spiceology for all my spices. And yes, you can buy that online as well. It's not just for chefs. It's a spice-owned company. And some nice Italian herb seasoning, but I'm only going to use this on one side because I don't want to overpower the flavors of this meat. I just want to enhance everything and enhance the gravy that I'm going to be making. So let's start seasoning. We're going to definitely, like I said, heavy seasoning. Okay. Pepper. Do the salt. And you're going to place this face down in a parchment lined. I don't use foil, you know, not too often to line my pan. I mean, yes, it keeps it clean so you don't have, you know, it's easy cleanup. But I don't like all that, you know, I don't know, it just bothers me with flavors, whatever going in. I use parchment paper. Uh, parchment paper works wonderfully for baking, cooking, anything. So here we go, we've seasoned. I'm not, like I said, I'm not putting the Italian herb seasoning on yet. So, I got my parchment lined pan. We're gonna put these babies face down in the pan. Just up here so see. There's one, and number two. You know what? Oh no, we got it. I think these are gonna be too big. We get better get a bigger pan. Hey, it's early. Don't hold that against me. So let's try this again. this up and plop it on the new parchment. No big deal. Look, clean pan. Okay, here we go. See this? So we got the hotel sheet pan. You probably won't have these at home. You probably will only be cooking one of these for your family, but if you have a bigger party and if, uh, your oven or if you have a commercial oven does fit a hotel pan, you're, you're in business. Okay. Other side. Season, season, season. Season, season, season. I'm gonna concentrate on this dish today only. I have many dishes I'm making today. We are also doing um, 
the Herb de Province pork chops. We are doing chicken cordon bleu. We are doing uh, chicken parmesan today. What else? Uh, we have the soup going out today. We are also, what else is going on today? I think those are the three today. Those are the three today. Salt, salt, salt. Salt, salt, salt. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm going to put my Italian herb. Remember I said, I'm only doing one side. I only want to enhance the flavors. I don't want the herbs because dry herbs are always stronger than fresh herbs, no matter what. Oops, spread that out. Um, are always fresher, are always stronger than fresh herbs. So I don't want it to overpower. That's why I'm only doing one side. I just want it to enhance because the, the pan itself is going to fill up with all the juice. We're gonna take that juice, we're gonna take it out, and that's gonna become our gravy. We're gonna make our roux, then we're gonna pour in the fresh juice from the meat and thicken it up, and that's gonna be what's gonna go over your potatoes. All right, so. Okay, so we are now on to our potatoes. Our meat has been in for about two and a half hours. It's got two and a half hours more to go. And uh, then I'll check it out, see everything's coming, uh, get all that juice out of there. So I can use that juice to make our gravy, but once we get there, we'll do that together as well. So we have our potatoes. I have lots of potatoes. I'm only gonna do a few of these just so you can see real quick. You can boil your potatoes the night before. This is so easy to do it this way. Make sure you have a good sharp knife. Of course, you know what I use, my Gunther Wilhelm. But uh, small knife, and you're just gonna go round and round, and you're going to just take the skin off, go all the way around, get the skin off, it peels right off. So what if you leave a little skin on there? You know what, it wouldn't bother me at all if I'm sitting down eating, I see a piece of skin in there, I know that I used a potato. You know, if I don't see a piece of skin in there, then I get a little nervous. I'm wondering, uh, you know, is there instant shit in my potatoes? Which happens quite a bit as well. And you don't know it, that it does. So, again, let's check, check this out. Say bam, go all the way around. Comes right off. And look, it's just the skin. You don't get much potato off of there, so you're not losing any potato. Um, and it all comes right off. So the green beans that I did, I just want to tell you real quick, I didn't take video of the green beans. It's really simple, guys. I use fresh green beans um, to do uh, my dishes. I never use frozen, canned, or anything like that. Uh, I buy nice organic green beans. I want you to have the best. Um, potatoes are also organic. So uh, when you steam, I never boil. If you boil your stuff, stop it. Uh, you're taking all your nutrition out of your vegetable. Uh, and uh, you're not really getting what you need. Uh, so uh, steam for approximately, I do. I leave mine a little more crunchier because my clients are gonna reheat them. So, let me put that out of there. So when they reheat, they come out perfectly. So I par cook them, almost done. They have a little bit of crunch, but uh, they're cooked. And uh, they can just reheat and have the perfect green bean when they're done and uh, have all the nutrition that they need. Like I said, here we go, potatoes. And those are done, I toss them with a little olive oil, sea salt and pepper, and fresh squeezed lemon juice. It adds a nice burst of flavor. You get the nice nutrition from the lemon. Get your vitamin C, um, very healthy. And uh, we will be back with the pot roast. So we are ready to make our gravy. What do you need for your gravy? You need butter. You need flour, and you need some sort of broth, or like I did, and what we're doing today is all this beautiful broth came right out of that meat. Remember, I didn't add any water to that meat. This is the importance of low temperature and slow roasting when you have uh, a, a roast that you're roasting and uh, you're doing this type of meal because all this beautiful juice comes out of it so you can make an unbelievable gravy. So we're going to add all our butter. There we go. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Melt all this down first. all 
all this down first. Then we're gonna add our flour and we're gonna whisk that in because we wanna get it nice and smooth. Then we're gonna slowly add our broth and bam, we have gravy, which is gonna go over top of those wonderful mashed potatoes that we made earlier. And uh, we'll do the final plating so you can see everything at the end. This is the beginning of your roux. See all that coming together? This is what thickens your gravy. And the more you cook this, the darker it gets because of course the flour and the butter starts cooking down and getting caramelized. The more you cook it down, the richer and darker the gravy that you're making. Let's say you're making a gumbo. A gumbo you're gonna make, you're gonna cook this down so it's really dark because gumbo has got those strong flavors in it but I'm not going to cook it down as much because I don't want uh, you know a strong gravy because the broth is strong enough and like I said we don't want to overpower the flavors I am going to add because of see a little too clumpy in the flour so we're going to add a little more butter to loosen that up a bit Melting, melting. Okay, next, let's get this down. That happens in cooking. You know, nobody's perfect. I screw up too. Well, it's not a screw up, it's an easy fix. So you just saw that. You got too much and it's too clumpy. Add more liquid. Liquid gold, liquid butter. There we go. Beautiful. Next, we're going to add the broth. And then we're going to whisk. Oh, hold tight. It's too hot, I gotta grab a glove. Okay. Clear. All right. Now, whisk and whisk and whisk and whisk and whisk, 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 and just keep stirring. Just like the fishy, keep on swimming, keep on stirring. Keep on stirring till you want that nice, smooth, yeah, don't worry, see all those nice bits and pieces? That's all good old pieces of seasonings and beef. That's what you want in your gravy, it's thickening up. See how much it's thickening already? We're getting gravy. So, you can have your gravy like this. Some people like a loose gravy. Some people like a thicker gravy. I'm going to do a little bit in between because when my clients get it to them, when they reheat their gravy, they can cook it down to whatever thickness they want. So I make it too thick for them. It gets a little confusing and they might not have the broth and you gotta have good broth and I don't want them to use um, anything but fresh broth and homemade bone broth or the broth that came out of the meat that I cooked today. Um, and I don't want them to go through that anyways. You know, that's not up to them. That's up to me to make sure everything's right. So we're gonna let this cook down. And then we have that's how easy it is to make gravy, people. That easy. Don't buy it already made. Don't buy those packets in the store. Don't be lazy. See all those bits in there? That's all the pieces from the meat. That's just all good flavors. Oh, it's gonna be so good over those buttered mashed potatoes. Now, last thing to do is we'll be plating. So just one moment. The meat's still cooking and we'll plate this. 
Okay, so we have taken that pot roast out. So let's open it up. It's like Christmas inside, I'm sure. I can see. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. They're beautiful. Oh, look at that. I just touched it. It's already coming apart. All right. We are going to plate. You see how tender that is? Just going to fall apart on the plate. A lot of little as you go over it. Mashed potatoes, gravy. Let's plate. Okay. Canvas is set. Let's do mashed potatoes first. Get over here and get the pot roast. Yeah, yeah. We like gravy, right? Yeah. Put a little fresh scallion on top. That's all right there. And then. We're going to finish it. For my plating, I made extra broccoli, so I'm going to show it with broccoli, but this dish, but you can get it with broccoli, this dish came with green beans. So um, I used up all my green beans, but we're going to do some nice roasted broccoli on the side. We've got to have all that beautiful color. And there you have a well-balanced plate. And this is what you would sit down to for dinner if you ordered from me. Thank you for watching!